Greetings everyone. In today's class, we will be covering the concept of reducing fractions. Let's get started. But first, let's define with you why we need this and how, of course, we must simplify these fractions in order to make them easier to work with. Let's begin by representing the fraction 1, 2. What steps should I take? I need to exhibit the fraction 1, 2. Let's take a square with you for demonstration. And let's represent the fraction 1, 2 here. What should we do? Since I only have two parts, I will divide this square into only two parts. So I will divide this square into two parts, and she should take one part. Consequently, I will color one part out of the two parts that are specified in the given context or situation. And now I desire to depict the fraction 2, 4, 2 fourths. In the identical manner, I will take precisely the same square and represent the fraction 2 fourths. I portray and visually represent this square through my artistic depiction. And now how many parts do I divide it into? I pay attention to the denominator and I divide it into four parts. Here I divide into four parts, so it is like this. Now I need to illustrate two parts out of four parts, so I simply have to color two squares. So I color one square and color another square to increase the word count. Well, now what I want to demonstrate to you. The issue is we obtained completely identical squares. However, we achieved success. Pay heed. Here is a shaded portion and here is another that is shaded in the exact same way as the first one. So what can I write? I can put an equal sign between these two trumpets to indicate their equivalence due to the fact that we have painted the exact same parts of the square. But how does it occur like this? Here is the fraction 1.2 and this is the fraction 2.4. So why are these fractions equivalent? Let's contemplate with you. It is highly probable that a considerable number of you have already deduced that when I multiply 1.1 by 2, the outcome will be 2. To obtain the result of multiplying 2 by 2, I will perform the multiplication operation, which will yield the product of 4. It is possible to perform such transformations using fractions. This particular rule is commonly referred to as fraction reduction. So, what does this action enable us to do? Let's document the fractional data with you once more. The addition of 1 and 2 is equal to the addition of 2 and 4 in mathematics. You can state that 1 multiplied by 2, and I obtain the result of 2. And it is great. Therefore, firstly, I take the fraction 1, 2, I multiply 1 by 2, and I obtain 2 as the result of the multiplication. I take the number 2, multiply it by 2, then take another 2, multiply it by 2, and as a result, I get the number 4. And everything is fantastic. That is, I multiplied it by the exact same number. But naturally, you have the option to inquire, yet the reduction of fractions and the simplification of fractions seem to be absent. The main concept is that we have the capability to transition from one side to the other which entails multiplying fractions by the identical number. Similarly, we possess the capability to move from one side to the other, thereby resulting in a reduced fraction. To demonstrate this, let's consider the following example. Two fourths is equal to what I can achieve by dividing the numerator two by two and dividing the denominator by two as well. 2 is the same number again. 2 divided by 2 equals 1, which is the result. 4 divided by 2 equals 2. Therefore, we obtain the fraction 1 half once more. We can increase fractions by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same number. And we can also go in the opposite direction if needed. That is, the numerator and denominator we can divide by the same number. And as a result, we obtain small numbers. 
This process is commonly referred to as fraction simplification. In the next classes, we will work with this action. And that's all for today. Goodbye, until we meet again.